All right. So, are we are we good? Okay. So let's uh, look at kind of if we are going from idea to publication. Say we've done our analysis, and now we are looking at potentially new projects. One of those things might be a quality improvement or performance improvement project. For example, earlier when I was talking about um, looking at C. diff infection rates, I said, say, you know, you found out you had 30% of your population getting C. diff in your hospital. Obviously, that is a very large proportion, and you probably want to get that lower. Um, so um, what would be the first step then in looking at, you know, a program's effectiveness for lowering your infection rate, or you could, the, the performance improvement could be several different things. It could be hand hygiene, looking at how often people are washing their hands when they should. It, there are several, several different methods. Um, so our first task in this is to figure out what data we have and how we're going to di display it. Um, so we may have hospitalizations Say, we know this person got C. diff, and we have their, their case report. We may have a total saying, we had this many infections of C. diff this month, and we had this many patient days. There's, there's lots of different things you can, you can have as your, your data points in this process. So let's say that in this, in this example, we have monthly infection rates. Now we need to figure out how we're going to display it. Our first option is a pie chart. Now, as you can probably tell, this pie chart does not tell you a lot of information. For one, it doesn't tell you what the actual monthly infection rate is. It only gives you, you know, slices of the pie. You could maybe ascertain that some months had higher rates than others and proportionally try and guess that, hey, April had twice the rate of February, maybe. but. At the same time, it, it's largely useless. In the words of Dr. Ramirez, use a pie chart when you don't have anything to say. So in other words, you should probably avoid using a pie chart in almost every context you can, uh, especially for quality improvement projects. Mm -hmm. Now, bar charts, while they can show you magnitude, aren't good for displaying consecutive data points. So if you have a monthly total, you don't want a bunch of different bars for each month. What you should use instead is a line chart because that can give you an idea of how your, your data points change over time. Now there are lots of different types of line charts depending on what you have for data. Um, some examples, there's the time to events chart. So if we instead had a really rare outcome and we wanted to see how frequently we would get it, we could use a time to events chart uh, that would look at um, what you would plot as actually the time between events. Um, so if between one case you would have, say, two months, and then between the next case you would have a week, you could look at that and ascertain, well, was this case that we got a week later because of our case earlier, and things of that nature. Unfortunately. I'm not going to cover those today. We're just going to look at run charts and statistical process control charts. Um, but there is a lot of literature on those types of charts if you are interested, and we can also help point you to them. Um, and run charts and process control charts, um, those are what we're going to look at today. And in those, you would actually use your monthly infection rates. So now when you first start out with your project, you probably, or you might, or might not, have a lot of data points. Uh, if you just start collecting, say, five months ago, you have potentially five months' worth of data points. If you, you have a common outcome, you could instead look by week and see variation that way. Um, but if you have rare events, it may be better to try and combine some of your, your time together. Um, but typically, if you have less than 25 points, you want to look at using a run chart. And there are some statistical rules you can use to detect what's considered out of control points where the variation is not normal. All data is going to vary to some extent, but what you want to look at is saying, 
you know, is, is this variation normal or is it caused by something? So the anatomy of a run chart, you're going to have your center line slash median, and that's going to represent the median of all of your data points on that chart. Your x-axis is going to be your time period of interest, so it'll either be days, weeks, months, years, I, whatever you are using as your, your grouping time. And your y-axis is going to be the, uh, your rate, either an infection rate or a percentage rate. And so your, your data points are going to be your actual data values. So if you see on this chart, this is your center line. And so you have data points that are fluctuating around that line. Now, a run chart has, as I mentioned earlier, several rules to detect what's considered normal or abnormal variation. And you can identify those by a few different ways. One way is that if there are seven or more consecutive points on either side of the center line, so if you are going above or below your median for seven months in a row, then that's saying, hey, this is abnormal. If you think about it from a mathematical perspective, you'd expect 50% of your cases to be above and 50% of your cases to be below the median. So if you have seven in a row, that's 50% seven times. So mathematically speaking, very small chance of that happening. But if you have five or more consecutive points increasing or de decreasing, that's another potential option. Uh, to show abnormal variation. Sometimes that could be, say, a, it could be seasonal variation. Say you have more flu coming in the winter months, so your winter months will have increasing um, infection rates. And then also if you have 14 or more consecutive points alternating up and down. So if you have 14 points in a row going one above, one below the median line, then that would once again tell you something might not be right. You might have some sort of oscillation going on where perhaps one month you have a, a high rate um, and then due to the high rate it, it peaks and causes a low rate. So that would just indicate that there's something odd. So going back to our chart, you can see that right here we have an increasing run of points. Uh, so that would be one thing that would say you have... Um, there's something going on there causing the increase. And then say you run an intervention at that highest point month because you realize, hey, we keep increasing. And then you can see that now we're all below the median. So that variation is very likely caused by our intervention. And that would be going into more implementation research. But if you wanted to track how well an intervention's working, you could use a run chart to do so. Now, there's actually an even better method of doing that with a statistical process control chart, um, oftentimes also called Schuert charts. There's many different kinds of these. Um, but uh, uh, for brevity, I'm going to call them SPC charts. Um, but you typically want to look at using an SPC chart when you have more time periods, so you have greater than 25. And so they have better rules for detecting abnormal variation. So in that sense, they are superior to run charts. Um, so if you have enough data, it would be better to do this. So, and they can help also determine the difference between common cause variation and special cause variation um, a, a lot better than a run chart can. So you all may remember seeing this SPC chart earlier today when Dr. Carrico was speaking. Um, so... This is an example of an SPC chart that was produced for C. diff management uh, that was actually published here um, at the university. And so what you can see on this is that there's a center line still, but this time instead of the median, it's the mean. Your x-axis and y-axis are still the same. Your data points are still the same, but you also have standard deviation lines, which if we go back you can kind of see them. They're a little bit faint. But uh, if you see the UCL and LCL, that would be the upper control limit and lower control limit. So that would be three standard deviations out. Um, but what that means is that all data have a distribution. And so the distribution is split up into standard deviations. So the standard deviation tells you how far away you are from the center. 
So if you think of your data, if you have a histogram or, say, a probability density curve, you would expect at the top of this would be your mean, your, it's your measure of central tendency, and then within that you have one, two, and three standard deviations from the side. Um, and so the, what you know is that 68% of your data is going to fall within one standard deviation, so about two-thirds of your data is within one standard deviation. 95% of your data falls within two standard deviations, and 99% of your data falls within three standard deviations. So if you use those lines on the chart, you can see that just having one point outside of the third standard deviation would be considered abnormal because it's only going to happen 1% of the time. So if you have multiple points outside of that third standard deviation, then something is probably causing that that is not normal. So if you think about this in context of process control charts, let's say that we have a different chart for MRSA. You have right here is your upper limit, right here is your lower limit, and this is the median. If you were to flip this on its side and put it next to the control chart, you'd expect 99% of your data to be within that area. So those two points that are up above towards the, uh, the later months, those would be considered very highly out of the norm. So it could be that you have, um, it could be that perhaps you hired a bunch of new people and they weren't washing their hands and that was the increase of cause. It could be that seasonal variation, it would be something that you would want to know, hey, let's investigate why did this happen. And there are several rules uh, that govern the SPC charts, what's considered in or out of the norm. So as I mentioned, one point above three standard deviations would be considered something out of the norm. Two of three points above two standard deviations would be considered out of the norm. So if you have between December and February, you have two points of those that are beyond two standard deviations. That's saying that if there's 95% of your data is within two standard deviations and you have two points out of three consecutively that are outside of that, that's once again a very, very unlikely occurrence. So that would give you cause to wonder, you know, is something going on? If you have four out of five points above or below one standard deviation, so you have roughly two-thirds of your data within one standard deviation, if four out of five consecutive points are outside of that area, then once again you have cause to concern as well. So it's very possible that you could be breaking multiple of these rules at the same time, uh, especially when you are looking at the points beyond um, standard deviations. But there's also eight points in a row on either side of the mean. So similar to a run chart, that, uh, that rule is, is still there. If you have six or more points increasing or decreasing, so again, similar to a run chart, if you have 14 alternating points, same rule as a run chart. And then if you have eight points in a row, um, this should actually say inside of one standard deviation, not outside. So if you have eight points in a row inside a standard deviation, then that would tell you that um, there is potentially too, too much stability in your data there. Um, so there are many different types of charts. Uh, what we showed you there was called a p-chart. It's based on the percentage or the infection rate. There's lots of other ones. You have um, various other methods within those charts. Uh, using the wrong chart can give you the wrong results. So if you use a uh, if you use a time between events chart for something that's very common, what you may discover is that you have too many data points. Um, and it's also possible to miss issues still. I mean, there's always room for, for error. Uh, hopefully, you, you won't, but that is still an issue. And you also may institute inter interventions that aren't necessary. Uh, rare events do happen still. So even if you have something that's, that's rare, it may actually just be something that was rare and not actually something causing it. If you investigate and you realize we don't know why this is happening, then it could just be that there was a spike. 
So some, some considerations when you're starting a quality improvement process, you're probably best off to start with a run chart looking at either weeks or months. Uh, and as soon as you can switch to a, a SPC chart, you should do so. And you can use time periods smaller than one month as data points. Um, and so also one final consideration is that a lot of times for the rates, your lower control limit is going to be zero because you can't have less than 0% as a rate. So if you have a lot of issues where you have zeros, so you have, say you're using weeks, and you have several data points that have zero infections, like that week, that could cause lots of issues with the how you would read an SPC chart. So you might want to look at combining it into months or longer periods. And then one final um, thing to say is that if you have too many data points, that could also cause issues. Uh, just how it's possible to potentially overpower a study, you could find a 1% uh, difference. You could find a very tiny difference to say, hey, this is there's something going on here if you have too many data points. So you should generally try to avoid going more than 50 data points. And if you, if you do have more data points, just use the most recent 50. Um, that way, you aren't necessarily overpowering what you have, um, especially because with central tendency, um, the more numbers you have, you know, the smaller your confidence bands are going to get. So you may potentially have lots of things that are considered outside the norm when they aren't, are, they aren't necessarily. And so what that also might mean is that you might have to increase your time periods too. Like say you get to a year's worth of data and you're doing it by month, you now have 52 points, it might be time to start looking at, say, hey, maybe we should look at, or not by month, by week, you would have 52 points. Might be time to start looking at it by month and, and going there. So it is a continual process. You're gonna wanna keep looking at it. Um, but that would be how you would, how you would use those charts to detect if something's going on. Um, so 